Hey guys, going on? Megan here. 20 proven ways to reduce muscle soreness and recover faster from workouts based on science and over 20 years of experience. Let's go. Sleeping at least 8 to 10 hours a day. That's obviously mandatory. There is no debate about it, guys. If you don't get enough sleep, every single pathway involved in recovery is going to suffer. Your testosterone is going to suffer. Your insulin sensitivity is going to suffer. It's going to take a long time to recover from muscle damage. Your cortisol is going to be upregulated. Your thyroid function is going to suffer. So that's low T3, high reverse T3. I could go on and on. Sleep comes first. Next, eating enough carbs, a high carb diet. I'm going to put that in crucial. It's not mandatory to recover, but it is definitely crucial. Guys, you got to replenish those glycogen stores immediately after training, especially if you plan to train the next day or in the upcoming two days. Remember, guys, after training, right after training, there's a two hour window where glycogen replenishment is maximize in terms of the speed of replenishment after that you still replenish glycogen but not as fast as in that first two hour window ton of studies on this so make sure you not only eat a post-workout meal high in carbs after training but you also want to make sure you eat a high carb diet overall next getting your healthy fat so that includes your monounsaturated fats your saturated fats your omega-3s that is mandatory that's one of the most underrated aspects of recovery you guys just don't eat enough healthy fats fats are needed to increase vitamin absorption especially your fat soluble vitamins fats are needed obviously for testosterone production and other hormones fats are needed to rebuild the cell membrane of your tissues which are obviously destroyed during training and not to mention fats are also needed to modulate inflammation right so get your avocados get your nuts pause get your egg yolks get all of the good fats especially your omega-3 so get your fatty fish as well next failure management so that's making sure that you don't go to complete failure that's rpe 10 rir 0 on every single lift i'm gonna put that in it depends if you go to failure on lateral raises bicep curls tricep extensions that's fine right that's not gonna hurt recovery too much but if you always go into failure on squats on deadlifts on bench press and rows guys that's gonna take you even longer to recover now keep in mind you have to train close to failure to maximize muscle growth i made so many videos about this in the past but i always recommend that you use the rpe of seven to nine meaning always leave one to three reps in the tank depending on the lift right because going to complete failure yes that last rep is going to stimulate so much more muscle growth but it's also going to cause a lot more fatigue and a lot more damage so again i put it depends because it depends on the person it depends on whether you're natural or not it depends on your recovery management and obviously it depends on the exercise right going to complete failure on squats is not the same as going to complete failure on freaking neck curls or lateral raises next taking a very cold shower right or ice bath I'm going to put that in. It depends as well. If your goal is muscle hypertrophy, I do not recommend that you take very cold showers or ice baths right after the gym, right? Because you're going to blunt the hypertrophy response and you're going to lower inflammation way too much, right? Remember, there's an inverter U curve to everything. You don't want to lower inflammation all the way down to zero, right? Because some of the proteins involved in inflammatory response are also involved in hypertrophy, right? So there's a difference between good inflammation and bad inflammation. And the problem with cold showers, if you do them after the gym is they're going to blunt the quote-unquote good inflammation now before the gym absolutely you guys know i'm a big proponent of cold showers to get your nervous system fired up to spike your dopamine your norepinephrine give you a ton of energy absolutely before the gym but after the gym i do not recommend it if your goal is muscle growth next stress management referring to chronic mental stress right i'm going to put that at crucial for obvious reasons, you do not want to be under a lot of mental stress while you're in a recovery phase because your sympathetic nervous system is always going to be fired up, meaning high cortisol, high catecholamines, and that is counterproductive, right? You want your parasympathetic nervous system to be activated when you're trying to recover, right? So you want to relax, you want to hang out with your friends, you want to watch comedy, you want to just have a good time, right? Give your body a chance to rest, digest, right? So I don't care if you got to meditate. I don't care if you got to do yoga. Anything that lowers chronic mental stress is crucial for recovery. Next, meditation. I'm also going to put that in. It depends, right? Meditation is only going to help you recover faster if you're prone to anxiety. If you have a lot of anxiety, not everybody has high anxiety, guys. A lot of us don't give a crap about most things, right? But if you have high anxiety, again, back to the stress section, then meditation is crucial obviously but for the average person meditation is not going to speed up your recovery or reduce your soreness right it's definitely not going to reduce your soreness that's for sure but it's going to help mental recovery by down regulating your stress hormones and helping you turn on that parasympathetic 
uh, nervous system state. Next, sauna. I'm going to put that in. It depends, right? Once again, the research is mixed. Obviously, it has some benefits, but it also has some downsides. Example, you do not want to expose your testicles to too much heat for too long. You guys know that's going to lead to reduced sperm count and obviously lower testosterone levels if the temperature is too extreme, right? So it depends on the temperature. It depends on how long you're there. It also depends on the extent of the damage and the inflammation, you know? So again, being in a sauna has some benefits, but it also has some cons depending on all the factors I just mentioned. Next, eating a healthy micronutrient, not just macro, but micro, so that's your vitamins your minerals and especially your antioxidants, eating a micronutrient dense diet, mandatory. There is no debate about that, guys. Make sure you're eating a diet that is high in zinc, in boron, in magnesium, in potassium, in calcium. I could go on and on, guys. All of your electrolytes, all of your trace minerals, and even the underrated vitamins like choline and its byproduct, which is B10. Guys, you got to have a micronutrient-rich diet, else every single pathway involved in recovery shuts down. There's no exception right and 99 percent of you guys watching this video i can guarantee you if you put your diet into chronometer you will see that you are deficient in at least one if not two mandatory micronutrients right and once again get them mostly from your diet not from supplements the only thing you guys should supplement with is vitamin d3 because it is very hard to get enough i use a vitamin d3 from diet or from the sun depending on where you live and obviously your skin complexion but apart from that get everything else from food only use supplements as a backup plan. Next, eating enough calories, right? So not under eating, not being in a huge caloric deficit for you guys out there who are cutting. I'm going to put that at crucial. Recovering from training burns a lot of calories. Your body needs a lot of calories to so upregulate your hormones, to increase methylation. Every process involved in recovery. And keep in mind, guys, recovery is mainly your immune system. And once again, your immune system is a calorie hog. It takes so much energy, so much ATP to recover from a brutal workout session and synthesize new tissues. So if you're under eating, guys, you're gonna delay recovery and you're gonna be sore for a lot longer than usual. Next, foam rolling or massages. I'm gonna put that in, it depends, right? Because again, obviously it depends on the body part, right? Because that's only gonna help you with soreness and increasing blood flow to the area, which obviously is important, but it's not gonna do a lot for reducing systemic fatigue and restoring power output as fast as possible so you can go back in the gym, right? So it's gonna help you with the physical side of recovery, right? Soreness, you know, shuttling blood flow and nutrients into the the sore muscle or the muscle that you train but it's not going to do much for the mental aspects of recovery and it also depends on individual responses to foam rolling not everybody responds the same which could be said for most things next avoiding alcohol obviously i'm going to put that in crucial you want to avoid alcohol during a recovery phase the only reason why it's not mandatory is because obviously it depends on how much alcohol you drink if you drink a little bit of alcohol it's not going to mess you up completely but it's still going to have a negative effect on recovery mainly because it's going to increase inflammation it's going to put a burden on your liver so avoiding alcohol is crucial if you want to speed up recovery right because remember guys alcohol is a poison your liver has to deal with that and during a recovery phase your liver is busy with so many different functions that the last thing you wanted to do is to stop doing what it's supposed to do and instead focus on metabolizing the alcohol you just drank alcohol destroys recovery that goes without saying next walking just moving around i'm not talking about high intense cardio or none of that no just moving around walking maybe a light swim regular walk at the park walking your dog just moving around mandatory once again you want to increase blood flow delivery to the tissues you want to you want to lower stress hormones you want to lower inflammation in the post-workout window and that's exactly what you're going to get when you just move around right when you don't sit at your desk all day people think that oh the faster way to recover is to do nothing wrong that's actually one of the slowest ways to recover you got to move your body guys once again that's going to increase blood flow that's going to lower inflammation it's going to improve insulin sensitivity it's going to help you replenish glycogen faster you got to move I don't care how sore you are, how tired you are, just go for a very light walk. Next, anything that increases blood flow to the muscle that you train, I'm going to put that in mandatory, right? For the reasons that I explained earlier, increasing blood flow is mandatory for delivering nutrients, so your amino acids, your vitamins, your minerals, even oxygen. Everything that your body needs to recover is going to be shuttled through what? Obviously, your blood, right? So you want to increase blood flow to the muscle. In fact, the reason why a lot of these practices speed up recoveries because that increased blood flow delivery so again any method that increases blood flow to the muscle or to your overall body without obviously require intense effort is going to speed up recovery drastically next supplements i'm going to put that in not that important you guys already know on this channel i'm not a big fan of supplements for many 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 reasons they are way too overrated way too overhyped and the vast majority of them 
don't actually work, especially if you're getting most of your nutrients from your diet. The only two supplements that I think everyone should prioritize is, once again, creatine and vitamin D3. And as I mentioned earlier, that's because it's almost impossible to get enough vitamin D3 during certain times of the year, depending on your skin color and also depending on your country's latitude, right? Where you live at is going to have a huge effect on how much UVB rays are coming through that sun. So very hard to get enough vitamin D3, which is so important for recovery and so many other factors. And again, creatine because it's cheap, it's proven, it's effective, and not everybody eats enough red meat uh, to get a lot of the creatine. Other than that, the rest of the supplements, not that important if you're eating a healthy diet. Next, avoiding junk food crucial for obvious reasons right junk food is going to increase inflammation and actually retard the recovery process so that includes too much artificial sugar that includes too many trans fats too many fried foods too many seed oils try to avoid anything that's going to increase quote-unquote bad inflammation during the recovery period not to mention it's going to crush your testosterone which is the time period when you actually need testosterone the most next training more frequently believe it or not i'm going to put that in crucial right? That's very similar to being more active, not being sedentary. People don't realize this, but the more frequently you train, not only the faster the repeated body effect is going to kick in, but the faster your body is going to recover from that same workout, right? As long as you don't overdo it and cause too much muscle damage, the faster your body is going to recover. That's just basic adaptation. If you train once a week, as opposed to two to three times a week, it's going to take you a lot longer to recover from that exact same workout. The body has evolved to adapt to stress. So the amount of stress that you put it under, again, as long as it's not overkill, that's going to dictate how fast it recovers. So train more frequently. It doesn't have to be super high intensity all the time, right? You could have a day where you go all in, and then after that, you could have a light day, right? Until your body's used to doing more intense, more frequent intense workouts. Next, getting enough sunlight, that's obviously crucial, not only for fixing your sleep pattern, which obviously is mandatory, fixing your circadian rhythm, balancing your hormones, increasing your vitamin D3 naturally, increasing your testosterone, lowering your inflammation, lowering your cortisol. Watch my video on sunlight. There are so many benefits to getting enough sunlight during the day. We evolved to be out in the sun and being indoors all day comes with a host of negative effects. Next, eating enough protein, mandatory, and that's high quality protein, mostly animal protein, right? Again, protein synthesis requires protein. Duh. Methylation requires protein. Resynthesizing dopamine to get your motivation levels back up requires protein. Making enough T3, replenishing your thyroid hormones, keep your metabolism high, requires tyrosine, which again is an amino acid. I could go on and on on all the benefits of eating enough protein. Make sure you're eating enough high quality protein that's very high in leucine and tyrosine. Right, so red meat, eggs, salmon, the usual list. mTOR reset, obviously in crucial. If you watch my videos, you already know why. It is very important that you take breaks from the gym, guys. I'm not talking about deloading. I'm talking about detraining. A full week where you don't train at all, especially for people who train hard. If you train like a pussy, then yeah, you could train all year round and you're not going to need an mTOR reset. But if you train hard, especially if you're natural so high volume high frequency full body workouts push pull upper lower guys you're accumulating so much fatigue over time i don't care how good your program is you're accumulating fatigue you're accumulating inflammation you're accumulating joint stress that your body eventually cannot keep up with right so it's very important that after four to six weeks of hard training you take a complete week off to reset everything reset mTOR allow your satellite cells and myonuclei to accumulate allow your androgen receptors to resensitize allow your central nervous system to recover and you will see when you come back to the gym after that you're going to be fresh your strength is going to go through the roof the rate at which you build muscle is going to go up and your motivation cognition and mental focus is going to be in a constant uptrend all year long all right next reducing bad inflammation right so that's anything that negatively affects your immune system so that's toxins injuries uh again alcohol dangerous drugs anything that negatively stimulates your immune system i'm going to put that at mandatory you want to avoid that because once again recovery is mainly dictated by how good your immune system is and if your immune system is too busy fighting a bunch of bs then that's obviously going to take away from the resources needed to recover from training so avoid quote unquote bad inflammation next proper hydration getting plenty of water plenty of electrolytes that's obviously mandatory your body's mostly water i don't have to explain this i made too many videos on how important hydration is for muscle growth hormone balance inflammation control stress control protein synthesis reducing muscle damage i can go on 
and on and on. If you pee in yellow, you are not fully hydrated. Next, contrast therapy. I'm going to put that at crucial. Again, that's contrast water therapy. So that's switching between hot and cold. That has been shown over and over again in the literature to speed up recovery like crazy, mainly because again, it increases blood flow because your body's going back and forth between vasodilation and vasoconstriction. It lowers inflammation and in doing so, restores power output and speeds up recovery extremely fast. Last but not least, maximizing your testosterone levels and all your other androgens. So your DHEA, your DHT, and obviously your free hormones, so free DHT, free testosterone, at the very top of mandatory. There's a reason why guys on TRT, guys who are on steroids, we cover faster than the mug. That's because testosterone is evolved in every single pathway that affects recovery. Glycogen replenishment, nitric oxide production for increased blood flow, protein synthesis, obviously, antagonizing cortisol, increasing energy, reducing fatigue. I can go on and on. Your recovery will be garbage if your testosterone levels, or to be specific, your nat androgen status is low. And once again, the best way to measure that is by measuring your grip strength with a dynamometer and making sure that it doesn't decline too much after the gym. All right, guys, hope the video helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support the channel by grabbing a copy of the ebook. I'm out of here.